Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drive. Today we have a beautiful Portimao Blue BMW M4 in the review and I can't wait to explain more about it. But before we go into detail, make sure to subscribe, leave a like. Let's start the review. Let's start with the design and some technical specs because by now we all have started to like the front of the BMW M4. Like I told you a couple of months ago, it looks very nice and interesting. Let's talk about the technical specs. So at the front, we have those big two kidneys. They're here, of course, to send fresh air, cool air to the engine. But there is something very important down here that you can't see behind this gitter because this is not the competition one. We have an inner air duct that is cooling the brakes and the outer one of, on both sides is cooling the water. So the water cooler gets its air through here. So as the air travels through those three flaps at the front and goes around the tires, it gets channeled through this panel comes down here and then by this little curve it gets again it travels around the tire to reduce drag comes back here gets used and up here as downforce pushes the car down makes it faster so that is what i really like about the curve and the look of this beautiful m4 at the back of course bmw m character spoiler pushing the car down Big exhaust pipes, as big as my fist, I mean four of them. This diffuser here for performance, of course, big ass, wide hips, wide shoulders. They even used flaps underneath the car, about here, to channel the air so it reduces drag and helps the car stick to the ground. It is literally one of the most beautiful cars and best performing cars in its segments. What are my personal highlights on a BMW M4? First of all, what I really love about this car is those wide hips, really. This part of the car really makes me want to look at it. It is somewhat, somewhat, somewhat beautiful for me, really. I think this hip here really changes the whole car and makes it so brutal and wide. Of course, the quad exhaust pipes. I'm absolutely in love with them. This is character. This is some, something I have seen on every other M3, M4 car before, and I love it to this day. The only thing that they changed it, it's not in the middle anymore. It is more at the outer part of it, but I, I don't mind, really no problem. Then, obviously, carbon fiber roof. They're getting better, they're getting more beautiful. Also using some lines here to channel the air. That, that's my third third really uh, favorite part on this BMW and then the rims the wheels I mean look at this wheel isn't it beautiful I love it when a car has some angles some cuts some corners that you really can tell I mean look at that it goes inside the wheel it is concave it kind of gives this inner inner going line so that is what I love a lot about cars like this it's time to talk about the engine of course pull two times on the handle Let's reveal this beast, the majestic German 2JZ. It's called an S58 engine. It is a 3 liter inline six cylinder engine. Twin power turbocharged, produces 480 horsepower, 550 newton meters of torque, accelerates the car in 4.2 seconds from zero to 100 and tops out at 290 kph. So that thing is literally here to destroy the competition. The M4 competition drives around the Nürburgring in 7 minutes and 30 seconds, which is insane. But to be able to brake that engine, you have to have good brakes. Those are called the M compound brake system. It is a steel brake, 380 millimeters discs at the front, 370 millimeters discs at the back. This is a six cylinder uh, caliper, six cylinder piston caliper and is able to decelerate the car on top conditions from 200 to zero in 128 meters. There are some additional highlights on the M4. For example, those beautiful looking side mirrors here, the M mirrors that travel the air through here with this kind of extension. Then at the front, we have lost something, but we gained two of them. So before we had a beautiful power dome at the middle. 
I really would love to see that thing again, but we have those two little kind of nimbles that are correlating the design of those two kidneys. Welcome to the interior of this M4 G82. So as you can tell, BMW stay true to themselves. It is a very natural and nice looking BMW typical interior with the air vents in the middle. Less controls here, just a basic gear lever here, the shifter, carbon fiber part somewhere and a sports wheel. And this is really what I like and hate about BMWs because you would wish for, for them to make it a little bit more modern, a little bit more advanced, for example, like the competition, like a Mercedes, for example. But still, this is something, this is like a homecoming for me because when I sit in a BMW, it doesn't matter which one, I always know how to operate all of the system available for me. So if you're interested in finding out more about the drift analyzer and all of that, click on the banner here because we made a whole video on the M3 competition, very advanced, where you can see what, what you can do with all of those beautiful things. But I'm going to talk about the performance of the car, how it feels inside and especially about this gear shifter. In 2022, a lot of cars have, of course, the ZF automatic or double clutch system. Here we have a manual gear shifter and I cannot wait to drive and show you how beautiful and smooth this shifts. Really, every gear goes in so smooth. It is such a short, short way to, to shift. It's, of course, not a short shifter like in some cars of you guys, but it's a very nice shifter. Let me talk about the seats for a second. So as you can see, I'm sitting very comfortable in this M4 because we have the M standard seats, the M standard sport seats. There would be a carbon bucket seat of the M3 competition, but I like those seats really a lot. They are very comfortable and they hold you pretty good in place when you go into a corner. So that is very nice and it's enough for a day-to-day -day drive. If you want to go on the track, take the carbon seats. So now, Let's check the position. This is my driver's position. I'm gonna hop to the back and see how the space is there. So the seat moves forward, gives me a little bit of space. And then when I sit down here, well, let me tell you something. It's okay. It's okay, but it's not for long drives. First of all, my head, the head, headroom back here is really not good. And what I really miss is the design of the M3 E92 that they used where the whole line came down here. So I'm not that sure that I really like this back part of the seats uh, or of this M4. It's, it's okay, but it's not something that I would suggest people to do. Let's take it for a drive because that's what this car is all about. <laughs> all right, friends, taking the M4 for a drive. How is it? absolute beast a performance machine fulfilling every dream you have as a car guy plenty of power 480 horsepower plenty of torque 550 newton meters of torque a beautiful gear shifter manual gearbox linear acceleration a little bit of a turbo lag but just a little bit and only in the beginning phase of acceleration. After that, pure, pure BMW fun. And this, I mean, friends, this is literally the best thing on this BMW. Look how smooth I can shift. Such a nice drive so beautiful all right the car should accelerate from 0 to 100 in 4.2 seconds let's see how i can do <laughs> well i didn't nail that one The fact that it doesn't have those 650 newton meters that we felt in the M3 competition because that would be a little bit too much power for only the real wheels to be driven and it's 
it's really surprising how this car handles it has the Michelin Pilot Sport tires it doesn't scare you too much it gives you a nice feeling and it gives you a proper proper sports car experience and this is what I like about the BMWs the most you can drive daily with them you can use them for your day-to-day -day work for everything but as soon as you get into the mode press the M button two times and just start accelerating it out of corners just enjoying a beautiful beautiful drive and this is something that not a lot of car manufacturers can do for you and I would say that BMW is the best in that segment I really really I really am in love with BMWs I'm a big fan of course I won't start from from zero because obviously it's just gonna uh, overdo it from 25 to 100 for example right okay first gear that was a little bit too fast all the specification that you need it is modern it is comfortable it has an OPF but it is just so brutal it's so stupid it's such a stupid car to drive rear wheel driven only the real wheels of course great weight 1675 kilos with the gearbox accelerates like crazy drifts of course like crazy no ZF automatic, nothing, just pure sport. I, I just want to drive. M1, yes, second gear, let's go. I don't want to even talk about it, just want to drive. And shift. What else do you need? Just shift down some gears and drive, enjoy it. Enjoy it, use it, love it. Absolutely nailed it. <laughs> Beautiful cornering, accelerating out, really nice drive. And the suspension takes on everything, it takes on very bumpy roads. It takes on normal roads, really fast corners. It's really, really a stable car to drive. I have to tell you, it's really a good car to drive. I, I enjoy it a lot. Although what I would like to have is more of a sound, that brutal six cylinder sound that we had before, like, like when, when you had the E46, for example, that really crazy sound. You can literally do everything with it. All right, so there's a corner coming up. Second gear, accelerating out, shifting into third. All right, so the corner comes up, I brake, heel and toe, turn nicely into that corner and accelerate out. A little bit oversteer. I mean, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that what this car should be about? This is driving, this is enjoying a drive, a proper drive, braking heel and toe going into a corner accelerating out next gear you get it the prices are pretty high of course it's not going to be as fuel efficient as the zf automatic of course it has only six gears it tops out at 290 kph with the m drivers package it's also very good also nice i think if you opened it you could drive really much faster but hey i mean you know this is a driver's car and not a lot of people are going to be able to to buy a car like this and when you buy an m4 coupe you're really not looking at the practical side man you want to drive it you want to pound it you want to have a car that you can use i mean look at those crazy shifts so smooth second gear <laughs> You know what makes the experience better? You know, you guys can't see it, but I'm looking through the window and what I see is the head-up display showing me exactly when I have to shift. It is such a brutal look. I mean, it, it's like I'm looking at 15 to 20 centimeters of only speedometer 
that shows me the shifting time and everything. It's crazy. It goes like through five, through five uh, uh, of steps, one, two, three, four, and then the sixth one is red. So you know exactly when to time your shift. It's, it's, just, it's just for cool people, man. This car is for cool people, really. Everyone driving a M4 G82 coupe with a manual gearbox, you're a cool guy and I like you. <laughs> Thanks to Remo Auto for giving us the car. Thanks for trusting us your beautiful M4. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a like. If you want to see the M3 competition video, there is a link up there. And see you on the next one. Bye-bye.